Hey folks, I was looking through Kyle Cook's storybook crash course, and I thought, you know, I, I thought I had some opinions about storybooks, so I wanted to put it to test. So I have here the same component on the left side. I have storybook on the right side. I have Cypress component testing, and storybook gathers. If you have prop types, it gathers them and then uses some control over how your component looks. It's mainly, uh, back in the day, the whole purpose was, or still, is to visualize a component by itself and help design it, right? So now we have Cypress component testing and it kind of is basically the same thing. So here, in the first variant here, we have a red uh, press me button and here we have that. In the second variant, we have it in green, the same button in green, and the third variant, a small version of it, small red, just call this card, small red, and then a large variant of it, and it really the whole thing here is just been passing different props, right? Is a long way. Now, Storybook in the past year came out with ways to also run tests against it. And in the previous experimental versions of Cypress component testing, we used to try to combine Cypress component tests with Storybook in the same manner. So, it, it Storybook by itself is still doing the same thing through some test frameworks, it's testing the components. But at the moment, as a developer, I don't know why I would do that. So here's that component, button component, and based on some of the attributes, it's rendered slightly differently. So that's the press button thing. So with Storybook, I took some quick notes. You need this default export that gives the component its name, it imports it, whatnot. And you have a base function, and then you just lay out the different variants of it. So I thought, okay, this is basically just passing different props to side mount, right? And here, the only reason we have uh, we have the base props in before each is because we're using side spy and that needs to be inside an edit block. And, you know, I'm doing that to be fancy, basically, because this archetypes, the handle click is kind of contrived. Um, effectively, what happens is when you click on it, it says that you clicked. But I wanted to test that. I actually want to test everything. So that's why it's being spied on. So the thing I don't like about say Storybook is, is it, it has its own syntax. It, it's kind of, it is JavaScript, but it has its own syntax. But I like being able to restructure and have all my freedom that I have in JavaScript. So with component testing, that's exactly what you can do. So this part is what's equal to Storybook as in every test, so you're setting up your component, and then you're making assertions about that component, about its CSS, for instance, in this test. Um, you can have, one, have a look at a different story, which is a little more complex. So in that one, what's happening is, and I keep opening this thing over here. In that one, what's happening is, we are kind of laying out things horizontally, vertically, without spacing, with so many things, or without any children. Right? And that's quite easy to do with uh, component testing as well. Go to steps, and specs right here, and then just go through. So we have effectively, and the number is not always equal, so I run the three here, but it's the same thing. So we have it in rows, we have it in a column, vertically, we have it without spacing, I mean, because these are just simply props. That's it. And yes, Storybook was back in its time was amazing. Wow, everything's visual. We have it in there. And yes, they did some improvements, but again, why do we need it now? Like, what's the what's the whole purpose? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, yeah, well, the statement might be controversial, but. I don't know. Like, it's the same thing. I see the same thing. Yes, maybe I don't get to play with it 
in, in the prop types that I define, but I can easily play with that in the properties that we see here. So here's that story, right? And effectively, it's the same thing. If the same thing I would do with the template, I named it exactly the same way. Now it's one on one, right? Uh, you don't need this part. That's just boilerplate. You don't need that. But after that, the various phase of setting up the stories. Well, basically, each story is a test. Well, not really, because you can't really test anything with storybook. Well, not the base version, but you can add test frameworks into it. But then you have this different syntax, and then you have that other framework. And you know, how does it run in CI? You know, you don't have anything like the dashboard. It's kind of a pain always to try to diagnose. Anyway, so there's that one-on-one -on -one comparison. And I'll give out the repo. Yeah, take a look. Let me know what you think. In my opinion, there's really not much point to storybook anymore uh, from a desk perspective. From a designer's perspective, yes, maybe it benefits them. It's kind of maybe a little more convenient to open something and play around with it and you know, click on it and see how it changes versus uh, as a developer, you know, you're the tech guy, right? Like uh, go in and play with it yourself. Okay, go ahead and render. Like 10 components and you know see how beautiful this is i can immediately lay out what i want to test there right and then immediately you know, i can go and change it there because this is javascript right i'm destructuring and then if it's the same base arguments i'm just overwriting them uh, let's let's look at it let's make it this way for instance but immediately then I, I, of course, my CSS has changed, and it's not, see, 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 testing, right? You can do it TDD. You can write the test yesterday and you can run it afterwards. Anyway, and I think that that, that most speaks for itself. And um, Kyle's videos, he's awesome. Uh, take a look at his channel. That's all. Enjoy. Bye.